few moments, not maybe as long as what I typically do, just simply because uh, it's just what the Lord has laid on my heart. And you know, there's different messages and different ways that God does things. And uh, preaching is this, preaching is the way that God conveys His message to us as we gather together collectively as a body of believers that God's placed here. I know that there are several that are sick and, you know, that had even been sick this week. And uh, one thing that I'm grateful for is a place of prayer. Not only in sickness, but, you know, in our lives when we need a fresh touch from God, where we need direction from God, where we need victory, there's nothing that takes the place of prayer. You know, we can talk about things, and I know that we can often get together with folks and we can reason things out, but there's no better person to talk to and to find a solution and to see things work out in our life like the presence of God. Uh, I, I do think there's something about you know, trying to be optimistic in life. And I think, you know, my wife and I recently talked about that. You know, being optimistic is a good thing. And instead of always being pessimistic and seeing the worst, you know, choosing to you know, see what we have and run with that and be grateful for what we have. In fact, I believe God commands us to do that. And I'm not talking about the power of positive thinking. That's not what I'm going down the road for. But I'm saying this, all that to say this tonight that when we spend time in the presence of God, I believe it changes our outlook on situations. And you know, I don't believe God wants us to go around moaning and groaning and with our head down, hanging low, like uh, the end of the world has just come. I believe God really wants us to be able to be uh, those who uh, participate in the joy of the Lord. And I believe that God really wants us to reflect the pleasure of serving Him and knowing that our life and everything about our life is in His hands. My life is not in your hands. My life is in, uh, in, in anyone's hands. My life is in God's hands. And the outcomes of my life comes from God. Amen. Uh, uh, even being slowed down this week, being sick, I, I believe that God allowed that. Uh, I'm, God, God was not to get us, Brother Doug, but God allows those moments of, of being slowed down and uh, uh, because He wants us to see what is the next thing around the bend. What is the next thing that He's working on and what is the next thing that He's doing? It, he slows us down to be able to, to just uh, rest in Him and to have that moment that is a sila moment where we breathe, where we pause, where we stop, where we reflect on what God has for us. And so in Matthew chapter number 26, Matthew chapter number 26, really starting at verse number 40, The Bible says, And he came unto his disciples, and finding them asleep. They didn't even realize what was ahead. God had called them, Jesus had called them to a place of prayer, and uh, here they are, they're asleep, not realizing the dangers that are ahead. And it must have been while they were asleep, Sister Stacy, that Peter aroused and woke up, or at least opened his eyes, because he begins to talk to Peter. And the Bible says, and he said unto Peter, uh, 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 which, like I said, he must be awake now. Uh, he said, what, could you not watch with me for one hour? Could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Peter, I know what's about to happen in your life. You need this time of prayer. Can't you watch and pray for just an hour? What's an hour? Really, what is an hour? How quick does an hour go at work? How quick does an hour go while you know you're doing a project at home? How quick does an hour go when you sit 
sit down with your laptop or your iPad or your telephone and you begin to browse. Goes by pretty quick, doesn't it? What is an hour? And that was what Jesus was saying to Peter. What, what is an hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. He said the spirit, that spirit of man, uh, 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 he said, uh, uh, indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I know you want to, but your flesh is just weak. You got to get yourself by, uh, by, by the nap of the neck and you got to force yourself to do it. You got to pray. Just one hour. And he went away and he came back a second time. The Bible says, verse number 43, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Want to, but they're sure. Now, I want us to think about an hour that could change the world. An hour that could change the world. Susan Wesley, get this. Are you holding on to your seats? Are you ready? Susan Wesley, she had 19 children. Bless her heart. 19! Sister Stacy, 19. Go, Susan Wesley. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of smiled as I read this, but I also understood as I read about Susan Wesley, Brother Eli, that for one hour a day, Susan Wesley would pray. Believe it or not, Sister Tina, she didn't have anywhere to go in private. Would you believe that, Brother Justin, 19 kids and not one private place to go? And so, Brother J uh, Doug, she would take her apron and she would put it over her head. And her children knew that while her apron was over her head, they were not to disturb her because that was her time alone with God. And she prayed. And bless her heart, I'm sure she needed every moment of that praying hour that she got. Let the apron over her head. And everyone said amen. amen. You can understand that, right? Really. But here she is, one hour a day, an apron over her head, Brother Craig, and she is praying. And that lady, her life changed the world, and her children changed the world because she was a lady who knew how to pray. I don't believe she was napping underneath that apron. I believe that she was truly waiting upon God because we see the results of what happened in her life. Now imagine that one hour. It is even less than half the time than what it would be if we would tithe of the 24 hours that we have in a day. Now imagine this. One hour a day for 365 days a year, that comes out to this. It comes out, if you divide it up, it means that you would have 45 days of eight-hour shifts that are spent with God. Can you imagine you taking six weeks of vacation? Uh, 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 and, 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 and in those six weeks, spending them alone with God. Wow. Wow. Would that be phenomenal or what if you could do that? In reality, that was what Susan Wesley was doing. David Brainerd said this, Oh, one hour with God infinitely exceeds all the pleasure, pleasures and delights of this lower world. I'm talking about men and women of the faith. And Jesus, He commands us to pray. He, he said this, he said, after this manner also pray, my Father which art in heaven. He doesn't, he doesn't say uh, a lot of information. He just assumes that Christians are going to pray. And we as believers should pray. I believe it would change our world. Amen. Jesus set the example. He said, when you pray, he said, enter into your closet. 
He wasn't talking about a particular place that you go in and you have a little room and you shut a door. If you have a closet, that's fine. But what he was saying was this. He was saying, go find yourself a place of prayer, not because someone is watching you or seeing you or you get accolades for that, but you do it in private and your father which sees you in private will reward you openly. God, teach us to pray tonight. So important to pray. Jesus set the example by praying in Mark chapter number 1, verse number 35. I'm not Mark, but I'm not going to turn. Well, I am going to turn there. Mark 1, verse number 35. The Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day. Brother Eli, that means somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., Jesus Christ is rising up to pray. God help my tired, tired body. I'm up every morning. That I take you to you're up every morning. Every morning you that time. Praise God. Amen. Spending time with God. Amen. But Jesus didn't just ask us, but he exemplified to us the importance of prayer. It concerns me. It concerns me. Prayer changes one's life. James says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails much. The Word of God says in Acts chapter number 4, verse number 31, and when uh, they had prayed, Peter and John there, the place was shaken. Amen. What can happen when we pray and then we allow the power of the Holy Ghost to just come by and shake up the place? Amen. I'm talking about prayer tonight. Amen. Ian Bound said that prayer is the contact of the living soul with God. In prayer, God stood to kiss man, to bless man, and to aid him in everything that God can devise uh, or man can need. Amen. Prayer is giving eyes to our faith. Amen. It is trusting heaven. Amen. With the ultimate indications that all will be well because we've talked to God. He's talking about prayer. Amen. And the importance of it. It's a place where we truly learn to surrender all of our problems to God. Listen, every one of us in the sanctuary has problems. And there has to be a place where we can surrender them. We live in a world that's so easy to surrender them to a friend by a text or a phone call. It's so easy to reach out to others by social media, amen, or however it may be. But I wonder how quick we are to surrender our every problem to God. There's some things I will look at quickly tonight about prayer. I believe that we need to learn to pray patiently. Patience in prayer doesn't mean apathy. It doesn't mean that we fall into some type of apathy while we're praying, but it means that we continue in consistency and in confidence and in boldness, knowing that when we Pray that God hears our prayers. Be patient with God. I've said this lots and lots of times. It's not my own, but I remember many years ago, Brother Steve Lodenslager sharing about what it is to wait upon the Lord. It is that being planted or braided together with God Almighty. It's us being one little strand of thread but being weaved together with many strands of thread that we become a rope, that we are strong. Amen. That is patiently waiting upon God where God is entwined in us and we are entwined in the will and in the plan of God and we are strengthened. Amen. Because God said this, Jesus said this Himself. He said, He that asketh will receive, and he that seeketh will find it. And he that knocks on the door, the door will be opened to him. Amen. Uh, David, uh, he, he gave confidence uh, in, in saying that, that whatsoever things that we'll ask, God will give us. 
knowing that if we wait patiently upon the Lord, God will hear from us. Are we patient in prayer with God? In a world full of buzzers and alarms and rings and tones and distractions and busyness, are we patient in prayer with God? I have to tell you, I've been slowed down this week and being made six or stay safe. On my bed, on my back, made me do a lot of thinking. Are we patient but pray and waiting upon God? Patient to see Him work and patient to see Him move. Amen. Do we truly pray and then we wait on God's timing, knowing that we'll inherit the promise? Amen. As we endure, or the word endure, as we are patient. Amen. Prayer isn't only demands. Amen. But it helps us to be patient with God and it helps us to be patient with others. As we go to God in prayer, in that model prayer, forgive us as we forgive those who transgress against us. Prayer also allows us a time that we can look at our life and we can reflect. And is there someone else that I'm not giving them the grace by which God has given me? To bring Jesus' illustration down to, 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 to just everyday lingo. It's easy for us to forget that we've had a $2 million debt that we've been forgiven. But sometimes we don't want to forgive others of a $20 debt that they have against us. And so prayer takes us to a place where we begin to look and we begin to examine and evaluate what God has done for us and what is required for us to do to others that we've got to forgive and we've got to be patient with others as God is patient with us. But well, we also have to pray submissively. Submission really is a part of prayer. See, sometimes it's easy to pray because we are emotional. And it's easy to pray because we have extra time available. But it shouldn't be our emotions that draw us to prayer, just that we have a few extra moments. But it should be because we're submissive to the Word of God because God commands us to pray. God commands us to pray, not just because we're available at the moment, but because we make ourselves available to God. God, here I am. Here I am seeking you because I'm committed to you. Prayer is a submission because it is a recommitment of our heart to God. I said to us this morning that Jeremiah, God told him to go down to the potter's house Go watch the pot. Be watched as the clay that the potter was fashioning was marred. So the potter didn't throw it away, but the potter began to mold and make it again. He recreated it. And I find that in our lives that God is constantly recreating us. When there are things that become a mar in our life, amen, God molds us and makes us and shapes us all over again. And part of that is because we find ourselves in prayer, amen, and we submit to the potter. You are the potter and I am the clay. Mold me and fashion me, God. I recommit and I reevaluate my life. And God, I recommit to you because God, I realize that in the place of prayer, I need to be submissive in areas that I have been my own man or, or you've been your own woman. God, Thank God that God has a, a way of opening us up in a place of prayer that we learn to be submissive. And then we pray overtly. Amen. Jesus said that He wanted His disciples to pray for just one hour because He didn't want them to enter into temptation. Listen, they missed a lot. Brother Justin, they could have watched the very Son of God agonize. I think there's something to be, to be said about when we pray together. You know, there's times where we have burdens on our hearts. 
Listen, I, I really want some folks to listen to this tonight. You know, there's times where we need to step out of ourself and we need to allow the Spirit of God to use us. Then we say, I'm going to go and I'm going to agonize with someone in prayer. Where we learn to pray with others. Jesus really just wanted His disciples to pray with Him. Yes, He was God. He was 100% God. But He was 100% man. He was agonizing. He was saying, if it be, God, let this cup pass for me. I don't want to have to drink this cup. It's a bitter cup. But it's a venomous cup. It's a sinful cup. It's the sins of all humanity. It's very difficult for me, my flesh, to be willing to do this. I just want someone to pray with me. There was no one around to be found. Listen, we all need someone to pray with us at times. And we all need to be willing to pray with others at times. I know we have to learn to pray for ourselves. I know we have to touch heaven for ourselves. But we also have this wonderful gift of others who can pray with us. Even Jesus sought that. But they also missed out on it. That God ministered to Jesus. And they missed out on the blessing of seeing Christ minister to them. Sometimes when we're not overtly aware of praying and praying for others, we miss seeing God work in their life on two folds. They don't see it happen because we don't pray. And number two, we miss it because God is ministering. But our flesh has us somewhere else. God help us to pray. But we are also to pray thankfully. Recognizing that we're in the presence of God. Do you realize that when we are in God's presence, there should be a holy alertness that we are in the presence of God. Aren't you thankful to be in the presence of a holy, holy, holy God? And he says in his word, he says to be still and to know that he is God. He said, I am exalted among the heathen, heathen and I will be exalted in, uh, in the earth. It's just being still and, and knowing that I'm thankful to be able to be in His presence. He is God. He is magnified in the heathen. He is magnified in all the earth. Do we ever realize that when we're in prayer? Thankful that we have a God who is highly exalted. Amen. He said in everything that we are to, 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 to be prayerful, continue to pray and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Be grateful for what He has done, for who He is and what He's done. Help us to pray. More than just a bedtime prayer. More than just a prayer of our meal. You know, yesterday we were praying over our meal and I knew that my mother-in-law was sick. And our girls, you know more information than you need, our girls can't say grandma, or couldn't say Grammy. She was going to go by Grammy. And so early on, they couldn't say Grammy, so they called her Gigi. And so it has stuck. She is Gigi. And so Pat Paul and Gigi. And uh, so I knew that Gigi was sick. And uh, when we were praying over our supper, I said, and God, touch me again and we feel better. Amen. As soon as I got done, Bella said, I love Gigi. You know, there's something about prayer that helps us be thankful. And in that moment, she was expressing her thankfulness for Gigi. But it was Brother Craig because we I wonder tonight if it couldn't be that we leave here with grateful hearts because we've spent time patiently and overtly and trusting God, amen, for what we have and we're thankful and we leave with a thankful heart. Amen. Prayer always helps us 
to be in harmony and agreement with God. Because he said if two or three would agree together, amen, uh, and help us to be thankful. And we should pray expectantly. I, I believe this. Uh, that when we pray, Brother Doug, we grab hold of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we fight with it, Brother Justin. And as we fight, amen, we know that God is going to work and move. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. If you ask anything in my name, it shall be done. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Be still and know that I am God. I I am exalted. So as we take the word of God, amen, the sword of the spirit, it should help us to know that we can expect great things. There was an officer in the British army that led a group of soldiers in the front line for four years and not one of them was killed or died. And the, 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 the officer was asked, how do you do this? He said, we pray together every day. Amen. And we claim Psalms chapter number 91 in our life. He said there are times, Brother Eli, where bullets are miraculously reflected from us. He said, but we know that that is because our life is engulfed in prayer. And we claim Psalms 91. I believe that as we claim the Word of God and we pray with the Spirit in hand, we can pray expectantly. And the last thing I want to look at tonight is that prayer changes us. Prayer changes us. Prayer changes us. Changed. I've been changed. I know that we reflect often on things in the Word of God, and there's some uh, stories that seem to really hit home and help us. But think about this very common story that we often talk about. But think about Hannah coming to the temple. We think about her petitions. We think about her prayer for a son, brother, or for a child, brother Justin. And God answers, Sister Tina. But have we ever taken time to think about that not only was her prayer answered, but she was changed? Because Sister Beth, she came with bitterness. She came to Rachel broken and hurting Mother Doug. Not only was her prayer answered, but Hannah herself was changed because of prayer. Do you know that we will be changed because of prayer. We can't hold on to the things of yesterday. That bitterness can't engulf us. It can't dictate our lives or angry. Maybe she was even angry inside uh, because of the way that she was mistreated. You know, she was bullied. I most recently read an obituary of a young girl who was bullied her life and so she took her life. What all was happening internally, Brother Eli, in her life? And she was hurt. Gina, she was disappointed. She was bitter, Brother Justin. She was angry. She felt hurt. There was lots of things. What was Hannah feeling inside? I don't know that we can even maybe even articulate and verbalize. We can look and, and we can speculate. But there was a lot of things that was happening because she was bullied in a home that she lived in. And it was very sensitive to her. But prayer changed her. What are the things of our life that maybe no one else articulates or knows about? But if we will find a place to pray, God will change. Couldn't you stay with me one hour? One hour, Jesus said. I needed you. And you needed me. And you needed God. Because temptation is coming, Peter. One hour of prayer. Could I ask us to come and be with tonight? Could I ask us to be thankful tonight? 
Could I ask us to be patient tonight? Could I ask us to be expectant tonight? Could I ask us to be changed tonight? As we spend some time in the prayer. Tonight, let's just all gather here. I'm not worried about an offering. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not even worried about a close to the service. When you feel like you're done praying, you may be dismissed. All I ask tonight is that you find a place in prayer. Amen. As Christ commanded.